Isn't this neat? Look at all those intricate little details. All the amenities a brood of little baby birds needs. Ooh, and a little coffee maker. That's for the mom. Hello Minders, welcome back to the Mind Watercolor. And well today, I'm going to continue working on this bird's nest. It's a little hard to see the details and it's a very detailed piece. Uh, so the live broadcast that I did, I know is probably not satisfactory to a lot of you, at least for seeing what I'm doing. And I had a lot to do to finish it. I, as it is, I've got about eight hours in this piece. So I will show you more excerpts today, better quality video, and we'll reiterate some of those tips I gave. I'll kind of compress them all together for a watercolor pencil. Now this was done 100% in watercolor pencil, the Faber-Castell Albrecht Durer's. So I'll be going over some of those tips. We'll see how this ended up being finished and I hope you enjoy it. What's the deal, dude? You gonna nap your way through 2019? Okay, fine. We'll see how that works out. On to the bird's nest. All right, so I'm going to back up a bit from where I started my live and just show you the process in the, from the beginning. And these will be excerpts because this is a long, uh, detailed process. What you see there is a graphite drawing, just a light pencil drawing, and it's sort of a road map um, just to know where I'm going to start putting values and where I'm going to start... Uh, shading in or drawing in detail. I've got a brown, sort of a deep, dark sepia. I'm just going to be drawing in some of the darker shadow areas, some of the deeper details. And these little twiggy areas, I'm just sort of negative. Well, I'm, I'm drawing in shadows on the shadow side of things, but I'm also sort of negative drawing into the areas where there's little recesses and little patches and triangles of darkness. Really all I'm doing is just adding to the overall roadmap, so to speak. I've not really started, being sepia is not a very colorful color, so I really haven't started putting in a lot of color. So I'll draw a little bit and then I'll activate it and see where I need more. And, and really that's the whole process. You know, it gets into color more later, but that is the whole process. Drawing a little bit, shading a little bit, activating it, and seeing where I stand and where I need to go from there. I think watercolor pencil is so perfect uh, for a subject like this because of the detail. And it's a little more intuitive to draw um, this kind of detail than it is probably to paint it. Um, although it can be done, uh, there's no problem, but it comes out looking a little different too. When you paint in details with a brush, they don't look quite the same as when they're drawn. And um, when washes are put in, you know, in, in broad watery areas or in, in, in just strokes, they look different than watercolor pencil that's ac been activated. So that's that's sort of, you know, I think the difference and why I like watercolor pencil from time to time. I just like the different feel, the different look of it. Now I have picked up, I think this is a Van Dyke Brown, I'm not sure. I will list all the colors that I used in this. It's sort of a red brown and I am starting to add tinges of color. And you will see skips, as I said, in the process, but essentially the process is the same throughout. I'm keeping mindful where the darkest values are going to be, so I'm starting to build those. Very lightly, but I'm starting to build those, and I'm adding color. And I want to add those little recess corners and shapes uh, those little dark areas first because I want them to show as I add more layers of paint uh, I want to make sure I can still see that all the way to the end I started adding all the color washes in broader ways 
um, I would obscure a lot of that underneath detail. The other neat thing about watercolor pencil is that as you go on an intricate subject like this, because it is a drawing medium per se, you can refine your drawing as you go. Drawing is, is a very natural process for me. And so with this kind of a subject, it just it feels uh, natural. It feels more intuitive. Drawing with a brush and watercolor, uh, it doesn't feel the same. You know, again, in the end, it's just a choice. It's just a choice that I picked for this particular subject because I thought it was well suited to it. I thought about just really broadly painting in some of those dark areas in the basket part of the nest and then adding highlights with opaque paint. In fact, I mentioned that in the live, but I decided to keep it as transparent as possible. So I am still keeping some of that, that twiggy, twiggy basket weave sort of feel in there. What you see me doing here, by the way, is sepia uh, pen, Pigma Micron. It's a sepia Pigma Micron. And what I'm doing is I'm adding some edges and lines to where I think the darkest, the very darkest areas will be. And that's just so they don't get lost as I bring the value down. And it did work pretty well. I, uh, you know, I was tempted to kind of get carried away with that ink pen and just add detail everywhere but in the end I really didn't want the ink pen to show for the style I was going for so I just added it where the darkest spots were and again as I add more and more layers uh, and tinges of color I will be able to see those areas, those dark edges through everything. Very limited palette. I used uh, sort of combinations of browns, red browns, and yellow browns. And again, I will put those color names of the, the actual pencil names down in the description so you'll know what I used. here you seeing me shade bigger areas and I've got a little demo uh, in the middle of this video coming up so hang on for that how, how you stroke matters I mean if you stroke deeply and heavily when you activate it you're gonna get deep and heavy co color I mean it's just I know logical but still worth mentioning and so how deeply or how hard you press I guess give pressure the, the the harder the shading or the deeper the shading the deeper the activation and the color is going to be I am focusing more on the lighter tinges of color now and less on the shadow what I've done in terms of the shadow shapes in the negative areas is uh, easy to, to see through what I'm doing so I'm just bringing everything up I wanted to bring this piece along sort of equally in other words not finish an area then move on to another area um, it, it was working best for me at least I want to make sure this basket of this nest this form has a nice dimensional uh, shape and value to it so 
So it's helpful for me to just bring the whole thing along as, as a whole. And that means moving around a lot. I'm doing similar things when I move around, but I am moving around a lot. Just for me anyway, I, I tend to get values wrong if I just focus on one area and get almost finished. Just more here of finding those little recesses and making them darker still. Drawing in or shading in and then activating. And I was asked uh, if you can leave the pencil on there dry. Um, you can. Uh, watercolor pencil is weak compared to, uh, let's say, a standard color pencil, like a wax-based or an oil-based colored pencil. It's made to be activated. That's where you get your full strength color. But you could leave it dry if you want. Um, I guess my question is, why would you want to do that? If you're going to leave the pencil and not activate it, just pull out a colored pencil. Um, the reason I never do it is because the reason I never leave watercolor pencil on there dry is because I'll hit it possibly with water later on and then I'll get an unexpected wash. So I always draw, shade, and activate. And as the piece goes along I make those areas smaller and smaller before I activate, otherwise I don't remember <laughs> where I added, you know, pencil that needs to be activated. So I'll do a little area, maybe an inch, a couple inches square, and then activate it. I'm alternating colors between sort of orange browns, red browns, and yellow browns, and the sepia, which is the most neutral brown. Primarily those colors, though. Now, this is about the point at which I uh, stopped and did the live broadcast. So if you want to see that, go to the live broadcast, which was the previous episode, and you can see. Well, I thought I'd insert in here recap of the colored pencil techniques I've talked about. Anything you can do with a colored pencil or a pencil, you can do with a watercolor pencil. That may seem obvious, but think about that. I mean, you can draw lines, you can hatch, you can shade, um, you can do it lightly. Uh, more pressure will give you darker strokes. So essentially it's pencil, uh, it, or like colored pencil. Now the beauty is you can also vary how you activate it. So I can add just enough water, for instance I can pull the tone away from a line by adding a little water, pulling that, that tone away and some of that line activates. And I can shade that way, leave the whole character of the line, it's really neat. Or, and I'm going to divide this, this hatching in half, I can use enough water to basically completely re-wet and dissolve that line. And I'll have just a, a pool, a wash of paint. Dry it off. Make my brush so it's barely damp. And on the other side, you'll, you'll see I'm activating, but I'm not obliterating all the line. I'm keeping the character of some of the hatching. So that's useful. You'll see here on this shaded area, I'm wetting the whole thing with a fairly uh, good bit of water and I'm getting the graduation that I had in the wash or in the uh, shading but um, I'm picking it all up and turning it into paint. And I have a nice little wash there. Lighter on one end, darker on the other. But, dry my brush out, make it just barely damp, 
and I can just blend the strokes without getting rid of the strokes. Now I show this and I talk about this a lot when it comes to watercolor pencil because the variance in that technique right there just gives you all sorts of possibilities. Blending is another one. So I've got that same uh, sort of burnt sienna pencil on the left and now I'm blending into it dry this uh, magenta, sort of a Bordeaux magenta color. And I'm overlapping them in the middle. And now I'm using a lot of water, just turning it into paint. And you can see they blend and mix nicely into a little puddle, a little wash. I can move that around and blend those colors together as much as I want. Make a new color or, or leave the color varied. But once again, go to a slightly drier brush, one that's just damp. And I'm blending the colors that are on there, but more in place, more where I put them when I shaded them down. So, very important techniques. Now one thing, this is a cautionary technique, and I just want to show you what happens when you draw. See that little bit of water there that I put? Be careful about drawing or shading watercolor pencil into a wet area. You can use it as a technique, but just be aware of what happens. And I'm going to demonstrate here. We'll start shading dry. And when you hit an area that's wet, watch what happens. Your watercolor pencil is instantly activated. Now that's fine. You may say, oh, well, hey, let's do it that way. We'll cut out a step. Well, that's fine. But what's happened is it's almost become ink-like and it stains the paper and you have very little blending left. Now I'm going to go back in and try to blend. You can see uh, it's stained. It's stained the paper. I can get very little blending out of it. So there are times you can use that technique. Most of the time, like here, I'm, I'm using it and I'm thinking of it like an ink pen that's not going to move around much. But I want to add little dark blobs here and there, dark lines, and I don't care about blending. That's the time to use it. So just be aware that adding that to, adding watercolor pencil to a wet area is going to cut down on your blending flexibility. I'll demonstrate again here, with just a damp brush. You see I have much more control of the blend when the pencil was put down dry, on dry paper. And finally, uh, just flicking off the tip is a very useful technique. Uh, I use it usually towards the end when I'm putting in detail and I don't want to go back and forth and back and forth with drawing and activating. I just want to put in little pops and spots of color here and there. Now you could do a lot of painting this way. I I don't because I figure what's the point I'll just get out my regular paints but if you're using watercolor pencil and mainly watercolor pencil it's a quick easy way to just pop in a little bit of color so those are techniques you can try and ex experiment with and those are primarily the techniques I use and they all work to give you a lot of variation and control so here's where we ended up after the live broadcast and um, I started pushing this forward and doing more work on it. More of the same. Deepening little shadows and recesses. Adding tinges of color. And the process does get very slow and tedious now, so I'm going to speed most of it up. I really love this. I really enjoy doing this. I, I got a lot of comments about, oh, Steve, you're so patient. You're so patient. Well, actually, I'm not all that patient. And it, you know, it has to be something that I really enjoy the process of. I wanted to show you this close up, by the way. This is a little piece I added underneath. Uh, and this just gives you a close up view of how I treat this lighter color added in first sometimes. 
um, going back and adding that's a sepia pencil there adding some of the little shadowy darker edges activating it seeing what it looks like And that's just a close-up look at the basically the whole process. It's nothing more complicated than that. went ahead and added some speckles and I'm trying to bring the value of those eggs down but this is just part of my process of seeing the whole thing come along in completion across the board I'm adding the shadows under the thing now this is actually a cool gray and I'm adding a shadow under the nest And I'm just, you know, shading it in as on a horizontal plane, the way it might be sitting on the, the desktop. And again, I don't go very far usually before I activate it. And I wanted to activate a piece of this pretty quick because I wanted to see if the value of that shadow was going to be what I wanted or was going to need layers. I ended up putting I think two or three layers of shadow. But here I am adding the rest of it. As a still life like this it just helps ground it, gives it, uh, feel, makes it feel like it's sitting on something. It's not floating. And moving around again back to the eggs. I'm bringing the values down in the shadow areas on those eggs where they need to be. This nest did not have eggs in it, by the way. It was an empty nest, and it was in a tree that was getting... Normally, I don't take nests out of trees, because on occasion, a bird will reuse them, but this apple tree was being heavily, heavily pruned, and where this nest was was not going to be able to stay, so... I used uh, two styrofoam... Uh, eggs that I got from Hobby Lobby as models and I just reduced them in size to the proper scale. Cool gray, cool gray pencils using just to get the values right. I'll go over this later you'll see with some blue. So this is sort of almost you know an underpainting, underdrawing. Now I'm showing you that technique. I'm pretty near the end here. And I'm just wanting to detail some of the edges of the shadow. And at this point, they're so small that, you know, just drawing and going back and activating and drawing and activating gets a little even more tedious. But this process is really not all that tedious. I get into the process. I really enjoy it. It's it's just very zen sort of meditative process for me and I just enjoy what I'm doing. So, you know, the only reason people get I think impatient with a piece is they just they want something. They want to be done, you know. You know, if you have a lot of work to do on a piece, just get into it. Get into the process and enjoy it. Here's that blue I was talking about, and it was a very subtle blue, so I'm just adding a very light shade of it, and I'll come back on top of that, you'll see in a bit, with more speckles so that they stand out. As a matter of fact, I'll use that process I told you to be careful about, of drawing into a wet area, because I actually want them to go down as, as dark specks. And so there's no need to blend. So you'll see that coming up shortly.
and this is looking about right not a whole lot more I'm gonna do to it there they are and that area is still wet so this pencil is going down full strength and I'm just little spots and speckles So well, that's a good example of a time or an example of when you might use that technique but in general be careful and the very very final thing is some highlights I was gonna do acrylic or gouache but it turns out um, I actually did a pretty good job of negative drawing in here so I didn't need a lot of highlights just a few and I had all the brightness I needed out of this uh, Prismacolor cream colored pencil so I'm just popping a few in here and there just to add definition just to let a few of these little strands of twigs stand out This is probably one of the lightest colored pencils that Prismacolor has. I have a full set of polychromos too, but in the very, very lightest colors, um, while I think polychromos are probably the best, uh, the Prismacolor, the light colors are more opaque, or the white especially. So again, just little tinges of contrast light color detail and we are just about done I hope y'all enjoyed this I really had fun doing this I think I probably have eight hours total in this piece so patrons you will get uh, my reference photos in a post so look for that and thank you by the way patrons for sponsoring this channel and making this content possible and thanks everybody else for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video bye bye